But that's one of the things that make, makes him so great and makes him such a, a competitor. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name, of course, is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some Michael Jordan. Now, today's episode, again, I want to take a look at NBA legends talking about Michael Jordan, but I want to mix it up a little bit at least. Having NBA legends talking about, well, the things that Jordan was great in and some NBA legends talking about his weaknesses for whatever reason. Anyway, before we start with this episode, do me one favor, subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoy the content. All right, let's go. Now the first clip that I want to take a look at is from Christian Leitner on The Dan Patrick Show. A pretty new clip I think I found like a couple of days ago and it's so nice to see that some players, former players, take a different look and don't always highlight the obvious stuff. So let's take a look. But when you look at Jordan up close, when you're watching him with the Dream Team, it, it, it felt like that was the coming out party where Larry and Magic had already passed the baton to Mike and he was the best player in the game and dominating probably those pickup games. What was your first impression when you see Jordan or you're trying to guard him? My first impression of Jordan and my lasting impression of Jordan is how much effort he put forth on the defensive end. People don't talk about that enough. You know, you get on Facebook and it shows his dunks and his offensive plays, but you got to remember, I think he was first team, all defensive team, what, 8, 10, 12 years? I mean, uh, people don't stress that enough. Uh, Michael Jordan was the greatest defender also. And, and look at the effort Kobe Bryant put forth on the defensive end. And that's where the differences are made. The, the small little things in the game that make a huge difference playing defense hard, playing defense the right way. The next clip that we're gonna take a look at involves Bill Embiid. And we all know he was never the greatest Michael Jordan fan. He would never, never give Michael Jordan any credit. And anybody would be the GOAT but Jordan. But let's hear what he has to say. LeBron versus MJ, we debate that often in sports. Where are you on the greatest of all time conversation? I'm very vocal. I think LeBron is the best player that's ever played the game. Um, he's six foot eight, 285 pounds, runs like the wind and jumps out of the gym. And more importantly, when he came in the league from day one, he knew how to involve his teammates to win. Uh, and that's something that Jordan had to learn for a long time. Now, if you go by championships, obviously, Michael Jordan has more championships. But I think LeBron in any generation would be doing what he's doing right now uh, all these years. I firmly believe that he's the best basketball player in the history of the game. He didn't have great hands. Mm -hmm. Couldn't go left, mm -hmm. right? And if he went left more than two, three times, he had to pick it up. I used to say, I was like, it's like, oh, you think you could call me? I was like, yeah, because your hand was whack. I used to say, your hand was whack. <laughs> I can call you. And like, bum, bum, bum. The rules are very simple. Left side of the floor, send him left. Right side of the floor, send him left. In the middle, send him left. He didn't have a handle. He couldn't handle the rock, like in college. MJ? No, he couldn't yeah. handle the rock. So like, even even at times, I'll be like, you we play pickup, but like, oh, I got Mike. You're like, cause I know I'm like, I'm get up on you. Like, you can't handle mm. the rock. And, and um, what happened? And then? And then. <laughs> and then. <laughs> He's the only guy that I know that his weaknesses that he had crazy. at the end of his career was his strengths. Baskets in the last 14 minutes. Michael came to Carolina. I tell everybody I was better than Michael. Yeah. For about three weeks. <laughs> you know, when you're tough and you're not going to back down from anybody. But then when somebody comes along that the f 
tougher than you. They're like, he was an assassin and he bullied me. He sought out the best at everything. If you were the best backgammon player in the dorm, he wanted to know. If you were the best card player, he wanted to find out. And he took everything as if he was losing a game seven. Just, losing just wasn't. It's not, and I didn't care what it was. He'd break a table if he lost the backgammon. So he he sought me out and you know we practiced two hours, two and a half hours. I'd be walking up the court and he'd push me. Where you going, young young fella? That's what he called me. So you were a junior when he was, was a freshman, junior, right? Just freshman year. Jamal, I, I find this really interesting. You came into the NBA, you get drafted, uh, about four months later, MJ retires, you play a full season, no MJ in the league, he comes back the following year in March, and then the Bulls dynasty, the last three uh, championships. What was it like to play in the league without Jordan? What was it like to play in the league with Jordan? Obviously, you also did a couple other years where he was in the league and then he came back with Washington. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say I think I played against Jordan in 93 as well. Um, I remember that with Ku Coach Pittman. And then the, my my second year, there was no Michael Jordan. And um, that was that infamous time, I think, when Scotty Pittman was trying to get him back and he held up the shoe, a shoe or something, come back or whatever. You know, what I re recall about that particular instance was that everybody was trying to find the next Michael Jordan. It went from Harold Miner was a candidate, uh, Grant Hill was the face of the NBA. Everybody was searching for it. Who knew that years later that would be LeBron James coming, you know, at the end of the day. Um, but everybody was searching for that next one. Penny Hardaway had it attached to him as well. I will say this. Michael Jordan, to me, um, I wasn't a huge fan growing up because it was, as a basketball player, there were certain things that I didn't identify with because I couldn't do it. And I wasn't able to jump and have my arm over the rim. That wasn't who I was. So if you were guarding Mike in his prime, how would you defend him? Let, let's just compare it to the greats I played against in their prime. Okay. You put Kobe. Yeah. LeBron. Yeah. You play KD. KD. All right. So when I caught KD in yeah. 2010, he was just becoming really good. Right. But with LeBron, LeBron first game against me, he had 25. And that was, that's when I was reigning defensive player of the year. Right. So I was like, wow, this is crazy. But I did have some good games against LeBron. Right. So if I can compare it to LeBron or Kobe, Kobe might have gave me 40 once. LeBron might have had 40. I think Jordan was a little bit better maybe than those guys. Right. I think Jordan would have gave me 50 a couple times. Really? I, um, the reason I say that, because even in my prime, he had 40 against us. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. When he was old. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was old. Right. I was an amazing defender. Right. And Jordan had 40. Right. So my, I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm learning with stories of, about Chicago that I can remember. It was 97, we was in Minnesota, and Flip had switched and put me on Michael Jordan, one of the greatest probably ever touched the ball. And we was on the right side of the court, and I counted his dribbles. I was able to catch his his dribbles, you know? One, two, come back, cross over. He crossed it back over, one, two. When he crossed it back over, I stole it. Give me this. He looked at me, I gave it to him. The very next play down, we go down, score. The very next play, they call it the very next play. This is, this is no sauce. I count the dribbles. One, two, come across. When I blinked, he was gone. I turned around, he was dunking the ball, giving somebody dapping halfway down the court that fast. That's not new. Michael Jordan wasn't human. Was so, there anybody that you kind of avoided talking smack to? Because if you did, yeah. your spirit got bigger and they wanted to beat you or? Michael Jordan. You don't want to mess with God. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta stay away from Mike. Leave that man alone. Michael Jordan and you, for a while, went back and forth. Yeah, he's at a different level of celebrity, isn't right. he? Only because of the, the, the different kinds of media exposure mm -hmm. that he's been given. If the two of you were in a room together, where do you think your conversation would, would focus? We're at the NBA's all-time team celebration, Cleveland, 1997. And over in the corner is Wilt and Michael Jordan. And they're sitting at a table arguing vociferously as to who the greatest player of all time was. And they're really? back and forth. And just, it just intense as could be. It bothers you when people talk about him as being the greatest player of all time. Well, it bothers me because we all have our opinions. 
I contend Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player who ever lived. Mm -hmm. I would put you number two only because you only won two championships. Now people are going to say, well, you know what? He had a lot of stats and this and that. You won two world championships, okay? I have a friend of mine who I talk to about once a week. You know what he says about Michael's four championships? Mm -hmm. He doesn't say anything about it. Because, Why? Because, because he has 11. You know, I said it countless times on my show, Jordan, obviously, to me, the greatest player of all time. But what I really like, especially in this episode, was that I could give you some clips where people were talking about his defense and some of the other attributes of Michael Jordan. I think sometimes, and it's understandable, sometimes you overlook so many aspects of his game because he was always so flashy and he has just so many great talents that is sometimes easy to overlook some qualities that he has. Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Was Jordan the greatest player of all time? I think we know the answer. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.